Hotman tries to dismiss as a bizarre conspiracy theory the idea that Israel pushed for war against Iraq. And this, and this whole Israel conspiracy is bizarre. In fact, a couple oh, of yeah, days yeah. ago, there was a news story about how Israel had advised the Bush administration not to attack Iraq because it would destabilize the Middle East. I mean, uh, you know, give me a break. Hartman misrepresents the news story about how Israel had advised the Bush administration. He gives the false impression that Israel was against destabilizing the Middle East. Look at what the story actually says. Lawrence Wilkinson said the Israeli message was, If you are going to destabilize the balance of power, do it against the main enemy. In that article, which I'll link to, Wilkinson said, The Israelis were telling us Iraq is not the enemy, Iran is the enemy. Notice Hartman ignores the fact that Israel was, and still is, pushing the U.S. to attack Iran. And he ignores the fact that the story is only talking about the Israeli message to the Bush administration in early 2002. Kathleen and Bill Christensen point out, in fact, the Wilkinson report does not refute the notion of an Israeli link. He addresses only Israeli-U.S. contacts in early 2002, whereas by later in 2002 and 2003, the evidence is overwhelming that Israel, and particularly the Israel lobby, were pushing hard for the war. John Mersheim, a co-author of the Israel Lobby book, specifically addresses this issue. The Israel government especially Ariel Sharon, and his lieutenants pushed the United States very hard to go to war against Iraq. Indeed, they pushed the United States so hard that Israel's supporters in the United States had to tell Israeli officials to damp down their rhetoric for fear that it would be seen as a war for Israel. Now, you often hear the argument these days that this is not true regarding Israel because Israel really wanted the United States to attack Iran instead of Iraq. There is no question that in early 2002, when the Israelis first got wind that the United States was seriously contemplating a war against Iraq, that key officials in the Israeli government came to Washington, D.C. and told the Bush administration that it should not attack Iraq, but it should attack Iran instead. There is no question that since the early 1990s, the Israelis have seen Iran as a greater threat than Iraq. But what happened was that the Israelis quickly came to realize that the United States was planning to deal with Iraq first and then deal with Iran and Syria. And since Israel has three major enemies in its own view, Iran, Iraq, and Syria, it was content to let the United States deal with Iraq first as long as it dealt with Iran and Syria subsequently. So what happened after early 2003, up to the start of the war in March 2003, is that the Israelis did two things. One, they pushed the United States very hard. Here I'm talking about the Israeli government. They pushed the United States very hard to go to war in Iraq. And at the same time, they reminded the United States on a number of occasions not to forget that once Saddam Hussein was finished off, that the United States had to deal with Iran and with Syria. So there's no contradiction in the argument that Israel preferred to deal with Iran before Iraq and our basic argument. 